and welcome to My Tiny Bottles, the project where I'm exploring my grandmother's legacy of miniature liquor bottles one tiny bottle at a time. I'm your host, Tammy Coxon, and joining me today is Rebecca Waldron, my very dear friend. Uh, and Rebecca, why did I bring you here today? I believe I am here because I am a spirits buyer for a um, large local grocery store chain, and I buy and sell a lot of tequila. Uh, and I have heard, you have told me, that you would sell and buy a lot of it in miniature bottles. Absolutely. It's uh, definitely a growing segment of our spirits portfolio is the 50 mLs. That is really fascinating to me. I guess I can kind of get it, right? Because as a person who likes to try a lot of different things, sometimes I'll look for minis so I can taste test. Right, right. There's that, and then there's also... Um, you know, there's the Halloween, um, adult Halloween or grown-up Halloween, grown-up ah. stocking stuffers. Um, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of ways that you can kind of market and sell. Yeah, is there like a time flow? Are there ebbs, ebbs and flows like times of the year where you sell more minis and? Um, definitely around the holidays. Okay, but right. yeah, the stocking stuffer yeah. thing. Oh, that's fascinating. Well, the mini I have brought you uh, to taste today is, of course, Jose Cuervo mm. Especial. Uh, this bottle as Best as I can determine is somewhere from 1989 to 1996. So were you drinking any? Uh, well, uh, let's just say I was in college during that time frame. Oh, so, so. much too young to drink. Much too young. young. <laughs> However, I do believe I may have experienced uh, some, some Cuervo during that time period. Okay. Well, um, it's not a very uh, enticing bottle for a lot of reasons. And I talk about that at MyTinyBottles.com about you know, how this tequila was made, that it's a mixed-o tequila. Um, but the other kind of strike against it, uh, <laughs> there are a lot of strikes, but the other strike against it is, of course, that it is a half-empty plastic bottle. And nobody's drunk this before. It's just a factor of evaporation that happens. So uh, I don't actually know. I've tasted liqueurs from plastic bottles before, and they'd had a lot of evaporation of the yeah. alcohol. So what was left was mostly the sweet Um this was 40% ABV when it started, so I really have no idea what it'll be now. Uh, so I propose we just dive in. Why not? Taste this one, and then we can talk a little bit more about right. minis uh, later. All right. Give me a glass. All right. All right. Here's the crack. Oh, there it goes. Definitely sealed. Just like college. Just like <laughs> All right, I'm gonna save a little of this in case we want to go back for a second. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. So. Tequila and agave spirit. Not a lot of no. nose. No, I, I smell more neutral spirit than that distinctive um, yeah. tequila smell that you would get for Jose Cuervo. And I think this kind of makes sense with the old bottles because the volatiles evaporate, right? right? So the aromatic elements um, blow off through those. Wow. I smell kind of like the caramel coloring a little bit. Maybe, yeah. That's where the okay. color comes from. Yeah, really not a lot here at all. All right. It's not as <laughs> off-putting as I thought it would be at first. <laughs> first yeah. We'll see how it tastes. Cheers. Cheers. Still alcohol there. Oh, yeah. There's still, like, I I didn't expect it to be that, like, there's a sweetness to it almost. It, and that doesn't Are surprise me because that will have concentrated. Okay, yeah. So the sugars definitely will have concentrated, but um, it doesn't taste as artificially sweet as no. some modern bad tequilas. I have to say, this it's is not way that bad. better than yeah. I expected. It's actually kind of tasty. I, I mean, yeah, it's not horrible. It doesn't make my stomach right. turn. I mean, I think it's, act, it's actively better than not horrible. Yeah. Wow. Who knows? Pleasant yeah. surprises are the best surprises. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, it's actually got some nice agave character. Yeah. Um, when I sip it, definitely a little bit sweeter than we would expect. And of course, the really interesting thing here is to compare it to the right, modern exactly. day one and see how it has evolved. So yeah, remember which one is the old right, and right. which one is the new. Got that there. old over here. And all right. So let's see. So this is also in a plastic bottle. Yep. It is um, different shape. Mm. Uh, this of course. Um, many of grandma's bottles are like this too, where they really try to mimic the shape of the modern bottle, of, of the, the big size bottle. And that's part of the charm of minis. Um, and this one uh, is doing, excuse me, um, is doing that. But of course, the label has changed a little bit here. Um, all right. So uh, 
It is a different kind of plastic. This one kind of is more rigid. Right. And this one's a little bit more flexible. Uh, the pandemic did change, like, sometimes with bottles being in and out of stock based on availability mm-hmm. of plastic. So, And I also just wonder if that's, like, an evolution in of technology yeah. over time. And now we're... Uh, so maybe these are less prone to evaporation than the 30-year-old and 40-year-old ones. All right. All right. All right, this is going to be an adventure. It's not quite as concentrated in color. And again, mm-hmm. I think that's probably an evaporation factor. I would say this one's not super yeah. aromatic either. I don't know. The old one still smells better to me, it even does. though. It yeah. does. Mm. Yep, that's got oh, that boy. thing I don't like about Cuervo. <laughs> Right? It's not bad on the finish, but... And there's not a whole lot of anything there, mm-hmm. really. But yeah, what's there is not great. Right. I get this kind of like musty, mm-hmm. dirty kind of up front. Right. And we, um, in the video about this bottle, I talk about mixed dough tequilas being a blend of um, agave uh, and other starches. And so historically, that would have been sugarcane. But increasingly, that can be, and I don't know what Cuervo uses for their other starches, but it can be right. corn syrup these days, right? Because that's such an easy source of sugar. Um, yeah. So I don't know what they're using. But it's definitely not as agave forward. This, yeah. this probably is still only 51%. I mean, I don't think there'd be any reason that it would be okay. higher than 51% agave, but maybe different starches. I don't know. It's not as sweet. But then, again, that's that concentration right. from evaporation. So the other thing that could be going on here is that um, distilling technology has changed. Okay. So um, starting, I'm trying to remember, um, in the, nine, in the like early, late 90s, early 2000s, after the period of this bottle, as best I can determine, um, one of the methods that became used for um, uh Tequila production is something called a diffuser. And so historically, the way you would produce tequila is you would take the agave hearts, the piñas, and you would cook them in some way. And that could be roasting in a stone oven. It could be in a big pressure cooker. But you cook the starches so that you break them down so the yeast can eat them and make alcohol. Um, But starting, uh, like I said, I think in the early 2000s, they kind of switched to using um, big tequila producers switched to using something called a diffuser. Mm -hmm. And that basically, as far as I can tell, you shred a bunch of raw agave, you run hot water through it to extract all the sugars, and then you ferment that. Right. Um, but because it hasn't had that cooking process, I know you have been a chef, yes, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah, this sounds like the Vitamix method here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so you know how much flavor yeah. comes from cooking things. And so what you get out of that process is cheap right. tequila, which this is. Um, and also you get um, uh, a lighter flavor. It's not as developed. There's not yeah. as much complexity. And so that could also be some of the differences we're seeing is in the Right. I mean, it's definitely not um, complex. I didn't expect complex, but it's also the, uh, the one from uh, the, the 90s um, isn't also off-putting. You right. know, it's like it com- yeah. there, there's not a whole lot of complexity, but not off-putting. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, the modern one still doesn't doesn't do much for me. Which I didn't expect either. So. Yeah. So let's talk about price okay. point. Um, my old bottle uh, is a dollar thirty. Okay. I did not do the math to figure out what that would be nineteen ninety six dollars to today dollars, but but more. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So um, how much did this tiny bottle go for? I believe that's a ten for ten, Tammy. Ninety nine cents. Yeah, absolutely. A dollar. My goodness. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. The MLCC sets the price. So <laughs> right. you know it could have gone up ten cents in the time that we were sitting here. I'm not sure, but yeah, I mean the price has not really gone up. Right. Or is even lower. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually gone down, um, which I guess makes sense given what I just said about diffuser well, right. technology. Um, this also probably was purchased in Canada. I don't actually know. Mm, U.S. government label. I, it's hard to tell unless it says LCBO on it. I don't right. really know. Right. So actually, I, don't, I have no idea where this one came from. But um, but uh, yeah, so, in 90, so are a lot of minis 99 cents? Well, yeah. I mean, there's definitely a distinctive category of 99 cent 
you know, 50 mLs that, um, you know, I don't know if you know, there's other brands that would be analogous to Cuervo that are popular. Um, but it's interesting because the expanded selection of tequila in 50 mLs is pretty impressive now. Well, and tequila is, of course, like the fastest growing spirit right. category right now, or agave spirits in general. We can't can't ignore mezcal, my favorite. I don't know if we have any 50 mLs of it. <laughs> right. They're probably, yeah. yeah, it's still pretty highbrow, right. but there are definitely highbrow tequilas. Oh, yeah. In Casamigos Mini's. is one of the best sellers for us, and it's also in 50 mLs. How much does that go for as a mini? That is like a buck 29, I think. So it's a little so, bit higher. But, not that but much. Not higher. appreciably right. higher. That's yeah. really interesting. You've brought me, I've seen a, like super fancy, oh, remember the one with like the, the skull. skull on the yeah, top? Yeah, No, there's super, and those are like $12. So okay, you're, for the mini. Yeah, for you're okay. definitely, you're, you're definitely paying for a cool bottle. Absolutely. And some people, you know, around Halloween want that skull bottle. And so that's kind of fun. And you know, yeah. that's, yeah. I'm happy to provide. All right. But yeah, Cuervo is the great equalizer. It's just been <laughs> steady Eddie all the way. And we should say, I mean, they do make some better Cuervos, do. you know, where the yeah. brand does make, uh, does make 100% agave tequila. So we don't want to, we don't want to, uh, you know, be too, too mean to no, Cuervo. No, I don't want to be um, a, a hater. I don't want to hate but, on Cuervo. Uh, but yeah, if you've only ever been drinking mixed tequilas, get yourself some 100% agave and give that a go. And uh, this was such a joyous surprise to me. The, really? I'm actually yeah. very surprised this and impressed. This is really fun. Yeah. So uh, thanks. All right. Let's uh, 90s raise nostalgia. our old... Bo- old, old glasses. Okay. There we go. Uh, have a cheers. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. You should check out mytinybottles.com if you want to read the story of this bottle and all the bottles. And don't forget to hit subscribe, like this post, leave a comment about your Cuervo experience so that you will never miss a future episode. Mm-hmm.